Although I said this, hallelujah. Um, in this teaching, I'm going to make practical the word freedom for you. What, is, what does it mean to be legally free? And um, practically free in the mindset of eternity versus uh, the temporary. Um, and I'm going to demystify the word saved. What does that mean? In a, you know, and uh, in a real practical way. So you can feel the essence of the word. And you can feel it and know it in your first person experience. Um, we're going to really look uh, at the relationship between the Word and the Spirit, the speaking of the Word, and the walking on the Word of God, and walking in the Spirit, the, the relationship there. We're going to unpack all of that. Also, we're going to have a look at some uh, contentious topics about hell and heaven, about universalism, or as I like to call it, multiversalism. And we're going to look into all of this and uh, probably will challenge some thoughts. So I suggest putting stuff on the shelf, asking God the Father to judge it, um, to judge my words and judge your thoughts, judge our words so that everything can be shaken till that remains is the word of truth. Um, yeah, it's a good practice to be in, to remain humble. Not to come to your own conclusions, because when your thoughts go out of your head, if you come to a conclusion, you just set up a wall. And uh, that can become an idol, and that can stop us from growing. The, the Apostle Paul called these stronghold, uh, strongholds. So um, let thoughts go out into the mysteries of God, and let them come full circle as you realize that the simple truth of I am you know, is in you. And so we're going to be talking about that as well, the big I. Who is this I in you? I'm going to be talking about this as well. So this teaching kind of, the, the first um, section, maybe the first 40 minutes or to maybe the first hour, really focus more so on the Word. And um, and we, we, we drift off into demystifying salvation. What does that mean? And then looking into the I. Then looking into what does it mean to be saved corporately and identifying in your spiritual body versus the flesh body and kind of balancing these things and realizing that it's okay to ex access multiple dimensions at once and hold um, multiple ideas in your mind at once as you have possessed the mind of Christ, rather the mind of Christ has possessed you. So um, we've got some heavy revies in here as well. We've got some, uh, some, some dreams and visions that I've had as well that will unpack some stuff uh, for you. And so, yeah, just enjoy it. Um, hallelujah pray God bless you through it and uh, you realize your God like nature and your union in Christ Jesus Amen let it be walking on the word is walking in the spirit my words are spirit and life Jesus said and Jesus is the word made flesh and the Lord is the spirit Hallelujah, the Lord is the Spirit. He's the Word beyond flesh. And He's the Word in flesh. And words are a seed. They're a gateway. And within each word is the essence. Within each atom is the essence. Within each particle is the essence. Within each thought is the essence. Within all things is Christ. He fills and floods all things. Praise God. Let's not put a false covering on ourselves and block the way. Let's acknowledge that all things are the Father's. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. And you yourself are this light. You are your Father's light. Hallelujah. So don't judge another. Praise God. That will block you. Opinions and judgments about other people will block your own light and dim your own light. Praise God. They are you and you are them. In the Father. Always looking through the seed of faith. This is the eye of the needle that we need to see all life through. It's impossible for man. Well, it's a good thing you're a new creation. 
<laughs> you can't believe it, so just receive it as you acknowledge it with your lips. You're going to eat the fruit of your mouth. You experience the thing. You walk on it. My words are a lamp unto your feet. You're going to walk on the word. And that is walking in the spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. There's no more fig leaves, no more false coverings, no more opinions, no more fighting for your limitations. Just so the ego can be right based on experience. Let it not be based on your experience, but based on the word of truth, the word of God. All my promises are yes and amen. Go look them up. You want to have the mind of Christ? Go look up the the, uh, the mental capabilities and the unlimitlessness or whatever you want to say about this, there is no limits to the mind of Christ. All things are possible to those that believe. Praise God. It's impossible for man to believe. It's impossible for man to do anything. It's impossible for man to do anything. But man in Christ Jesus, all things are possible. And you are in Him. It's been revealed, the veil's been torn. So if there's any veil of separation in you, that's a fantasy. If there's any wall of separation between you and your neighbor, that's a fantasy. If you see that there's an enemy in the world, that's a fantasy. Even in the spirit, it says that all things will be made new in the spirit, reconciled to him in the spirit, in heaven on earth, and on earth. So even angels can't separate you from the love of God. Is it not written? Lol, I'll make my my bed in hell, lol, you're there. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not death and not angel. Everything's been reconciled in heaven and on earth. So when we say yes and amen, praise God, that's the testimony. So I want to talk about the word and the relationship between the word and the spirit. Because we can read Romans and go, we got to walk in the spirit and that's when the sons of God It's like, so walking in the spirit is to do with identity, for one. So everything comes down to identity, even the words, everything we flow on, everything I'm talking about, all communication. When we bring it down to the um, the seed of identity, where word first sprung out of, it was I this, I that. The way that you see the world as a child, you de- develop an, a self, a, a self identity, an I. Now we're taught, and it won't always be this way, but we have been taught. Um, I know for me, and I would say everybody here, been taught the I, apart from I am. The individual I, we've been taught to be the individual I, as opposed to others who have different points of view and connected collectively with clusters who think similarly about things this is this is a reflection of heaven in a certain way because in the garden of eden there are different fruit trees and people with different expressions you've all got a unique um, fingerprint but people who are let's say apple trees they hang out with apples bananas with bananas they're just a the effortless um, gathering together of the same kind but there is a place in the spirit where you become the whole garden well, there's no more just you're, you're identifying with just your expression, but you're identifying with the spirit, which is formless, which is before the I. Hallelujah. So the word traveling inward now to your first person expression, feel that I in you. Know that I. Christ said, um, well, Christ said through Paul, it's no longer I who lives. So are you still living? All men died in Christ Jesus, past tense. Therefore, therefore, all men have been risen, past tense, in Him, far above. So, you're, you know, if you're into I, and you think that your I is not the Lord's, the Lord, you've been, you've been bought with the highest price available, His blood. So, by divine blood rights, legally, He sets who, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Legally set free so you've set free from your self so that i that you learn to be as an individual and the ego that that um expressed itself and grew itself and and really um has to come to the end of itself 
you've been set free. You don't have to go kill yourself now. Right now, you don't need to kill yourself. Stop doing that. Don't need to beat yourself up. You can see when you're not just you, but you're identifying with the Spirit, you can easily see that you did die in Christ Jesus. Therefore, would it be any benefit for you to die again? The Lord says to his people, his bride, I have not sent you here to die on the cross, but to live on the throne, to live in the garden, to be life. I'll tell you a small experience about this, which may shift something for you. I always believe there's a lot of glory on the cross, almost as if that's the pinnacle. I don't know, growing up in a Christian home, it's like the cross, the cross, and the cross is the gateway, it's the eye of the needle, it's, it's the mystery of Christ that Christ himself would come and die, become the lowest, get involved in human sacrifice to redeem all things. Crazy stuff. Anyway, I was in the spirit, and I was, fly, I was flying as the wind, but in a first-person experience. And if you haven't had this experience, well, you have in me, because we're connected. And so just don't get envious, or don't get weird, or you can hunger and thirst for spiritual gifts and things like this, but know that you're not doing so out of lack. Because when we take everything back to source, everything before the foundation of the world, where you are seated, where you are presently, you know, your mind has been raptured in eternity, therefore you're above the timeline. So every time period is you. Every time period, every person, every expression of the spirit is you because you are spirit. You're not just a soul. Mm -mm. You can have as much glory as you want. The glory that I share with the Father in the heaven before the foundation of the world. Shadaramasu. That's yours, baby. Hallelujah. Anyway, so this experience, I'm flying around. And uh, praise God, because we're like, He is born in the Spirit, is like the wind. So I'm like the wind. So I've got this first experience, uh, person experience as the wind. Um, it's me. Praise Jesus. Isn't it good to know that even when you have an out-of-body experience, you're still the body of the Spirit? Because your real body is in heaven, and it fills and floods all things. Your body is a body of water. Amen. Praise God. It's not a, a water that's contained in the temple. It's a overflowing of the cup. My cup overflows. Sharayana Makesha. So I'm flying. I have this first person awareness that here I am. Okay, I'm here. Where I want to go, I'm flying. I get this revelation. Oh, the cross. The glory of the God. I want to go to the cross. I'm flying up. I immediately, um, as soon as I have that thought and that intention, because we're moved by intention, I started dipping down fast. <laughs> Going down, traveling down, 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 down. And then I start having second thoughts. I'm like, what have I asked for? What have I, you know, where am I going? I'm going to the cross. I'm going to this cr a place of suffering, of like torment. Hell on earth. Literally, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh to convict sin in the flesh. Praise God, when you were, when he was convicted, you were convicted also. Holy Spirit. And now he's been convicted of righteousness. He is the righteousness, and you've been given that gift also. So you got to know you're not a sinner anymore, saved by grace. You are a new creation. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And if the righteousness, then everything. Righteousness has to do with not just it being in the right standing, in the right position, but actually in the right person. And actually, um, righteousness is accessibility to the traits of God. Righteousness is spirituality. It's formlessness. Righteousness is, I just want to demystify this word, righteousness is being as he is. It's the God nature. So it's not just right positioning, as in you're a sinner and then you're positioned in the one. You, um, you're not a sinner. That flesh nature was cut off at Calvary at Skull Hill. If it hasn't been cut off with you, it's just a fantasy and you're just delaying something that's already happened and so it's a fantasy loop looping something temporal. Praise God. 
I did it for 30 years. Hallelujah. Um, you just got to accept that the word is truth and then everything will shift in you. And don't, don't think it's coming in the future because your mind has been raptured in eternity. And you start acknowledging these things, you walk it out because you're walking in the spirit because the word and the spirit are one. My words are spirit and they are life. Praise God. Shadayana Mata. So I'm, I'm flying in the spirit. I, I go, I want to go to the cross. I start diving down. And I, I think to myself, oh, I'm going down. Like, where am I going? The cross is here. Good boy. Shadow back here. Um, and uh, I start pulling out. I start pulling out. I go, Lord, I don't want to. I don't actually want to go to the cross. I, I get a bit of fear hits me. And any fear that hits you, let it be uh, known that it is the fear of the Lord. And any fear that you think is coming from a devil is actually fantasy. Let that be known in Jesus' name. Any blood-curdling fear that you fear, and you, uh, any demonic experience you've had, where you fear, um, you can't, you can't let that be. There's no resolution there. You need to acknowledge that the Lord fills and floods all things, and so you go, well, that wasn't the law, that was a demon. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> From one angle of perception, it was. That's what you experience, but the truth of the Word of God is this. came to you as a thief in the night you did not perceive him not you did not perceive him <laughs> correctly when the eye is single the whole body is full of light and that's okay there's grace but uh, we need to see things single eyed praise God and you see the Lord coming through all things Let's get on. Hold, mate. Out. Get out of it. Pooch. Good, 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 uh, good guard dog on our hands today. My God. Go on, get out of here, mate. Praise God. Isn't it good that even, you know, the dog barking is Christ? Hallelujah. <laughs> it's Christ. It make my, my righteous as bold as a lion. Formlessness, righteousness, spiritual. Shadarumo. Anyway, yeah, so I started battling in this experience. And, uh, and uh, I pulled out of it. And the Lord said, very clearly, in an audible voice, I'm the God of the living and not of the dead. And that kind of changed my perspective a little bit. And uh, there's a lot of glory and mysteries uh, at the cross because that's where that's where sin had its final death blow. Um, and you can't think that death's going to you know, be swallowed up in victory in the future because it already happened. Now, there's going to be an unfolding of it, but the seed is has everything in, contained in it. The full manifestation, the canopy, is contained in the seed. So to see it and experience it and taste it and touch it you know, and have it manifested in the natural, we need to be fully identified in Christ Jesus because we were killed and sin in us was cut off then. You may think, no, 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 I'm still struggling with this and with that. Well, you've got this big list of things you need to clean up in your life. Well, I'm sorry, you're identifying with self, and that I in you was crucified. So let your, give a, you know, let your lips confess this. You eat the fruit of your mouth. Give a good report in the promised land. Amen. So when the spies went into the promised land, God said, I give you the land. Go check it out. It's pretty good. They come back, and they give an evil report, says the Lord. What was the evil report? They were seeing the giants in the land. They were seeing phantoms. Moses said, phantoms have been my rival. Illusions. Vain imaginations, Paul puts it. Strongholds. 
that exalt themselves up against the knowledge of God. So what I'm bringing is the knowledge of God from third heaven perspective, from the throne room perspective, looking down on earth to the ego eye. And that's just because I did what I'm telling you to do, which is acknowledge with your mouth. Believe in your heart. That's just a giving up of a hum- that's being a humble heart. You don't have to know stuff intellectually, and you certainly don't need to feel anything. Only thing that you need to feel is a letting go and a surrendering and a humility. So that's believing your heart, resting in what is in reality, trusting, and confessing with your mouth. That that unlocks everything in life for us. Praise God. And uh, so there is a relationship between this word and the spirit. So the word of truth and the promises of God and uh, it is great. So I want to set some people free from um, some vain imaginations, including vain imaginations like you need to be like Jesus of the four Gospels. Now, don't get me wrong. You need to be like him as he is, so are you, right now. But his expression then and your expression now are going to be totally different. You've got a, a unique fingerprint, and the Lord is the Spirit. So Christ in you, hope of glory, that's the gospel. It's not the gospel going, well, I've got to be like Jesus Christ. What would Jesus do, WWJD? No. Although it's the same love coming through you, so don't be surprised we do the same things. You will experience doing the same things. He is the way. You've got to go down the way to know the truth, to, to live the life, and in fact be the life, to know the life. Praise God. So um, what I'm saying is a, is a double-edged sword, but I want to set you free from religious ideas and concepts about trying to do his works because the lord says to you enjoy being a six-year-old christ instead of trying to be a 30-year-old christ because the child i'm going to say it again enjoy praise god i'm going to say i'm going to even go deeper hallelujah enjoy being in the womb of your mother no works are necessary in this rest. You've been born again. Enjoy being in the womb of your mother. Stop trying to be a 30-year-old Jesus. Praise God, I hope that set you free. So, um, what's the practical takeaway of this? This is just truth I'm, I'm bringing to you and some, some first-person experience as well. The biggest gateway, the biggest takeaway, really, that I want to bring is the power of the word. And if you've been saying things to yourself over and over, arguing for your limitations in the flesh, because you haven't seen experience and breakthrough in the flesh, well, um, you've got to repent, return to the high place of truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the truth of the word of God is this: you have died, past tense; you have been risen up, past tense. So there's got to be a, uh, a humble response in the heart and a confession of the mouth without any experience, without any manifestation. Now, you will eat the fruit of your mouth. You will experience these words. These words are a seed. So when your heart is humble, it's like the good soil that Jesus talked about in Mark 4. So praise God. You have that good humble soil, which is the son's soil, and the father can sow his son into your son's soil everything's the son so i'm saying holy spirit where the son there is the father holy ghost is jesus christ and the father praise god <laughs> one god you're in this one god so we've got to give up the eye in us and you don't think you're not worthy of that well of course you're not it's impossible for you that's why you died at skull hill so don't resurrect yourself in a vain way in a in a foolish way in an ego way, in an individual way. No, resurrect yourself by dying to self. Dying to self isn't beating yourself up. Dying to self, like these things aren't, it's not a works. It's a, actually an effortless letting go with humility and going, well, there's, I, you know, I can't judge myself anymore and I can't judge anyone else either. So unrighteous judgment will keep you out. But there's a lot of unrighteous judgment against your own self because you think that yourself is yourself. Yourself is Christ. 
no longer I who lives, it's, it's Christ who lives in me. Now you've got a unique expression that feels like you. That's the gift of life for you. That's the gift of God for you, created in the image of God to experience what it's like to be God in the first person perspective in your flesh and then outside your flesh also. But isn't it interesting when you're outside of your flesh, you still have a first person perspective. So the face of God that you wear is formless, just like the Holy Spirit, the faceless man. That's your real body. The real body is the body of the spirit. Now your local temple is good. It, it enables you to, it's like a spaceship, a, spy, a space suit enables you to, I mean it's an avatar really, it enables you to um, experience this dimension. But you've got to know that you take up all things and you are righteous just like him, meaning you are formless. So you take up different forms and the four elements of the earth, you experience what it's like to be the fire. My God is an all-consuming fire. He's, he's also the waters of the Holy Spirit. He's also like the wind. But he's also dry like the earth. Supernatural, yes, super dry, super earthy. Right? So nothing wrong with the earth. And if you're experiencing a dry experience, what you consider a dry experience, you've got to know that's a supernatural encounter in the moment every day of your life. We just don't put much worth on it. But it's definitely worth the light in heaven. In fact, this is the most holy place from the throne room's perspective, believe it or not. Why? Because this is where there's the most contention on planet Earth here. There's so much contention. If that's the right word, uh, there's a, there's, um, it might not be the right word, praise God, in my mind that means a certain thing. What I mean by that word is uh, there's a there's a battle. There's a battle. This is a battleground. Of course, there's no battleground for those that have been ratcheted in the spirit. And you have positionally, you have legally, but just because you're legally married doesn't mean that you're married because you might not have even, you know, if you just got married legally at the altar and then walked off and said, see you later. I mean, you're not experiencing that marriage, are you? So we need to agree with the word of God. And when we agree with the word of God, we'll eat the fruit of our mouth. You experience a perspective from the spiritual perspective. It doesn't mean you have to be raptured out of your mind, seeing things like out of your body, seeing things like this. This is this is uh, spiritual gifts, and this is a, a way of seeing life that, that is uh, good, but you don't need to do that because you can know in the moment, in, even in a super dry environment, supernatural environment where you think nothing's changed, and yet you know all things. And in the moment, you have a rich treasure of glory that can sow the word of God into people's hearts like this. And you have discernment and all these things. And the expression, let's not judge it. The manifestation, let's not judge it. Let, let it be. Because if you're trying, to, you're trying to get out of your body, well, praise God, <laughs> you were sent here on earth to be in this body, so enjoy it. It's your holy temple. So we've got some weird religious ideas growing up. I did. About the flesh being like evil and stuff like this. There's some truth in that, of course. But in the light of Christ, all things have been made whole. The whole body's full of light because you, because you've got your right operating system. Right? It's like, praise God. It's like a computer with a virus. If you identify with the virus, you're gonna have a bad time. It's true, but it's not the truth. The truth is this. You're the operating system. You're the you're you're all good. The virus that comes in, that's something we all had to deal with. It's called sin. That's okay. There's been a greater uh, upgrade. There's been a you're a new you're a new upgrade. And even the, the, the word new creation there really means a whole new design. So not just like a, the same computer with new uh, software or new uh, program so that no virus can, can get through your firewall, whatever the fuck terminology you want to use, that shield of faith, hallelujah, his faith, not yours, so you can rest in that, rest assured, praise God. A um, little bit of hard work pushing out your own faith, so just enjoy being a Christ in the womb or a six-year-old Christ or eight-year-old Christ, whatever image the Holy Spirit is gelling with. And uh, just enjoy being a child of God. You can't even enter the kingdom of heaven unless you're like a child. But the, the, the new creation, kindness new creation, we're talking about a whole new time period, whole new uh, design, a different, not just a different operating system within uh, the computer hardware, but the hardware itself, all new. 
you got a new body and you're going to experience it. Humble heart, confess with your mouth, you experience it, but enjoy the now. Because you're still going to be you, Christ in you. Enjoy that union. Praise God. He is drawn with the Lord as one spirit with Him. So the spiritual body is all things. It is God. That's you. <laughs> That's just true. And even thinking, but I am not. Well, you are, but you're not. Is there any separation from the piece of fruit and the tree? Did it not come from the same seed? So what I'm saying is that we are we are gods, and Jesus said this. We are gods. We're born of God. We're like the apple coming from the apple tree. God is the apple tree. We're just the fruit. But we're not just the fruit. How glorious is this fruit? This is why I call this place the holy place, because shakare humadyara, within this apple contains another tree. And within this apple, not just one, but many trees. In one seed contains the whole garden of God, the seed of Christ, the seed of all things. And the seed is in every word, my words of spirit and life. So be encouraged. The takeaway is get the word of God in your mouth. Eat the word of God. He says, eat and drink and you will have eternal life. The eating needs to be the eating of the word of God. He's not talking about taking a bite out of his arm. That's why the people, it's such a hard teaching, who can receive because to the Jews, he's talking about something really um, out there, you know. But what he was talking, he was talking spiritual language and redeeming the culture that he was in, using the cultural language, but giving a spiritual interpretation in a meaning, which is why, again, this is the holy place. Every place is the holy place. Holy Spirit, when you've got the mind of Christ, praise God, holy of holies. Out of court is your flesh. In accord is your soul. Holy place is your spirit. Holy of holies is his spirit. And don't you know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? And the spirit has been flowed out, overflowing into the whole earth. The whole earth is full of his glory. This place is pretty holy. Hallelujah. <laughs> he says it is. So match your mouth with his mouth. If you match your mouth with Messiah's mouth... You are speaking from the throne of God, and this word does not return void. And you are not just a local I, you are part of the I am collective. So don't judge your brother, other than they are righteous. Now, temporally, they might be doing some stuff, and there's discernment, and there's temporal judgments, right? We make judgments of decisions, judgments are important, but your foundational judgment is Christ in them. Because that's the gospel. We no longer see male or female even. No Jew or Gentile, no Christian, non-Christian. No believer, non-believer. We just see Christ in all things. He fills and floods all things. All things in heaven and earth has been reconciled to him. All men died in Christ Jesus. Therefore, all men were raised up. That's the gospel. If, you, if you're not preaching this gospel, you don't know the gospel. That's the gospel. I'm not talking universalism. I'm talking multi Universalism, multiversalism. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. That's just the gospel. That is the gospel. Now, if your intellect can't handle that, that's okay. If you have a humble heart, confess with your mouth, God will teach you the mechanics of how this works out, how free will operates in this, how hell, how suffering, how temporal mindsets, how choices play into this grand uh, scheme of God. But you got to understand foundationally, and the capstone is this reality. It's glorious. Christ in you, Christ in me, hope of glory. That's the rock foundation. Who do you say I am? He said to Peter, Jesus said to Peter, He said, you're the Christ. He said, upon this rock, I will build my house. I can't reach the internet right now. Check your modem or router connections and try again. I love these fucking holy demons running around the place now. <laughs> Shut up, Google, you piece of shit. I can't say that Google isn't Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. He fills and floods all things. So what time period are we going to live in? Hallelujah. I don't even want to talk about time so much, but let's just 
keep it real simple. We're raptured in eternity because we've been given the mind of Christ, free gift. As we live in the mind of Christ, we have the renewal of the brain and the body. But in the renewal of the brain and the body, we can enjoy the fullness of Him and of the fullness of the mind of Christ by living in the Spirit, which is the Word of God, as a letting go of ourselves and uh, surrender into Him. And if we're not feeling anything, great. I didn't feel anything either. Half, you know, most of the time, I've just felt like normal. Why? Well, God wants to anchor in the truth of the spiritual reality into your natural circumstances. He doesn't want to have to jump you out of your body for you to feel alive. He wants you to feel alive in life. That makes sense? So everything natural around you is supernatural. He wants to anchor the spiritual reality of truth and love and wisdom in every object around you to ha actually have a renewed mind. Now, he could jump your mind, your brain out of this dimension into another one, but it's, that's exactly what I'm saying. But if it looks the same and tastes the same and smells the same, and yet your inner meaning and your understanding and your appreciation and your attitude has changed, is that not the Christ? Hallelujah. Just getting my preaching on. But a lot of people are looking for spiritual experiences. You are a spirit. Everything you experience is a spiritual experience. So I just want to set you free from that demon. That religious idea of trying to be like other people and trying to have other people's experiences. Let your experience be your experience. Enjoy what is right now present. Praise God. And what now is right now present is your first person experience, your first person perspective. Praise Jesus, which is Christ. It's no longer you that live in that high throne. That's Christ's high throne. You've been bought by Christ. Now he you're a love slave. You're just going to have to deal with it. You were a slave to the flesh. Now that you know the truth, it's set you free. Now you're a slave to the Spirit. So just enjoy that. And even in the midst of sin, if you fall off your high horse, praise God, the mind of Christ doesn't, and that's your mind. Truly, truly. Your whole past, in any, any you know, any, any stuff that's happened which, which wasn't of God, you've got to recognize that it is of God because it has been redeemed in Him. It's impossible for us. Yeah. If we look at the track record, yeah, for sure. But don't you know that Jesus Christ died for that? What, you want Him to die again for you? Die again for your sins today? Even in the midst of the sins today, His grace remains. Grace covers the multitude of sin. Love covers the multitude of sin. When the enemy comes in, like a great flood, the Spirit raises up a standard up against him. So don't give an evil report in the promised land. The promised land is the mind of Christ, is the experience of Christ, is Christ in you. Hallelujah. So give a good report because God's given you the land. He's given you the earth. He's given you the mind of Christ, which means you can be in the bells of uh, the bowels of hell and enjoy that place, being there, done that. Pleasurable experience it's called the baptism of fire. So people who come and say, you know, hell's not, you know, a refining place, they have not had the baptism of fire. Period. They've got the anointing of fire because they speak the word of truth. Yet there's parts in their soul which have not been burnt up yet. Amen. Otherwise they'll be speaking this truth. And they come against it, it's because of their lack of understanding of what the baptism of fire does. And the baptism of fire looks a lot like hell. It's the same fires of God. He's an all-consuming fire. The thing that burns in hell is the ego, is the self, is the vain imaginations, the thought life, the self-identity apart from Him. All these crooked truths, so which are counterfeits, which aren't really truth, they are an echo of truth, they get burnt up in this place. So that all remains is His Word. Let everything be shaken that can be shaken until His Word remains. Hallelujah. Praise God. That happened in Christ Jesus, so identify in Him. The quickest way to the self-death, if you don't know that you're dead already, even this truth, I'm just putting it down your throat all day long. Um, don't be identified in your own experience. Be identified in His experience, and when you speak that out, you overcome by the blood, freely given, already spilt, and the word of your testimony. 
He's the word made flesh. Actions speak louder than words. He died. You died in him. Get over it. You pass the tipping point in him. In fact, not just past the tipping point at Skull Hill, but you went all the way up into the throne room. You lived there. You've always been there because in eternity you access all time periods because that's God's dimension. That's God's grace for us. So we can see the past, present, and future and see even every local body, every local vessel is filled up with our drink because we are the drink. We are the spirit. It's a spiritual body. Identify with that body. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise God. So I'm not bringing a heavy word. I'm bringing a strong word, but it's light and easy, right? This is this isn't something that you need to wait for. This is something that already happened, and so keep keep confessing it. Let your experience, you, know, you create your own reality, and that reality is, but you've got, a, your soul is a massive magnifying glass, actually very small, but you can point it wherever you want and experience that thing. Now, you were handed this magnifying glass down from your parents, you were sold into sin, a fallen outlook, you are enemies of God in your own mind. Now, they had breakthrough in their life, no doubt, and, and you know, that's great, but praise God. You've been given the breakthrough of breakthroughs, the breaker anointing, not waiting for tomorrow for it. It already happened. Identify in his life. Because the word, you either, it, it's binary. It's binary. It's either you believe the word of God or you don't. Now, it's too good to be, to be true. It's too good to believe. And our experience certainly doesn't map to it. So we can't even believe it. We need to receive it. How do we receive it? By giving up humble heart. Just breathe a sigh of relief. You made it enter into you know strive to enter into this rest of belief that's the promised land what work shall we do or what shall we do to do the works of god mm, just believe in the one who said that's what jesus said to his disciples when they asked him that question so what should you do just believe how do you believe you can't even believe it's impossible for you how do you get through the other needle you identify with him no longer that you that lives it's, it's him we identify with him you go where he goes I only see what the Father is doing. You know, Jesus identified with the pre-Adamic Christ, and that's why he was able to say that. Jesus had a flesh just like you and me. He came down and he got stripped of, of his godlike nature, but he had the godlike nature in a seed. So he dealt with everything that we dealt with. He overcame it, so we can too. But we overcome it so easily in comparison to him. Why? Because he did it. Is it easier for you to walk through a wall, a barrier, or is it easier to walk through the same space when that wall or barrier has been taken away? Because I tell you the truth, that wall of separation was taken away. That wall of separation was taken away in Christ Jesus. So when you identify in him, acknowledge him, everything shifts. The veil has been torn. The veil of flesh has been torn. So you just got to admit that. Well, I guess I am Christ. I guess. Doesn't feel like it, but I guess I'm in the Spirit. I guess. You know, I can't say it's not true. I can't say it's not perfect. Because when you start acknowledging it, that's how you line up your magnifying glass, your soul, to what is true. It's like the parable of the unjust judge. You keep on saying the words, words, words to the soul, the soul will line up and you'll see the spirit in all things. Oh, Amen. So praise God. My lamp, my word is a lamp unto my feet. You want to walk in the spirit, walk on the word. My words are spirit and they are life. There's a light to your path. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll make your path straight. He'll make your path light and easy. Praise God. If you've got a burden of, of heaviness on you, it, it needn't be there for one more moment. I breathe it off because that's not your responsibility. He took responsibility for you. Let him carry you. There's no, there's no more us. We're not involved here. This is Jesus. Now, in this dying, ironically, we live. In this dying, ironically, we do 
pick up our body and we walk around and we are real people, real expressions, and we have this local I. But we are grounded in the I am. We don't have a foundation that's just, you know, sand, temporal mind-body connection that we, we are identified with a body and that we think we're getting older, we think that we're sick, we think that we're this or that, we think that we're in love with this person, ooh la la, we think this, we think that. That's sinking sand. But we're, when our foundation is the Christ, Christ in you, Christ in me, Christ, all, all, all us, all them, all for one, one for all, praise Jesus, it's the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, judgment on these words, Father, these are good words. May they produce excellent fruit forevermore, eternal words that don't return void. Hallelujah, a cycle of tree of life from good to better, from better to best, Keep getting glory to glory. Hallelujah. This is the word for us. So it's all good. It's all good. The veil, of separa uh, the veil has been torn. The, the wall of separation has been taken away. So all of that separation has been illusion. So see your natural world as supernatural and be free today. It's no longer I who lives. It's Christ who lives in me. Let that be your confession. Because if you don't have that confession, you're, you're, you're putting your life, you're building your house, you're building your thought life on uh, sandy temporal ground it will not stand so let it be <sighs> let me be the bad big bad wolf that blows your house away right now <sighs> and uh, what remains life remains i'm the way the truth of life aren't you this life hallelujah before you had thoughts were you not alive before the beliefs uh, bl uh, the bs the belief systems were you not all one in the womb of God? Return home, be born again. Many people who say they're born again are not born again. They were born again, they'll be speaking this truth. It's very easy. The, the, the truth is easy. The seeker of the truth is complex. It's true. Hallelujah. Do not let your teachers block the way. There are many good teachers that teach the word. But they're unbalanced and they have parts of their soul in unbelief because they're looking for a future restoration, not realizing that it already happened in the seed that was given. And when you identify in that seed, you can live in that seed and your word should reflect this reality because we have been past tense raised up, all the cosmos even raised up in here, past tense. So as we speak this collectively, we're, we all collectively create it much quicker. There's a multiplication as people join in on this word of truth. Of reality, things that are already being established, a new heavens, a new earth, new thought life, new body life. You can live in that new thought life, new body life right now today. Word of God is sharp and a double edged sword, dividing soul and spirit and the bone and marrow. So you better believe this thing goes full circle. And it has already in his body, and you identified in him, and he is the spirit, the Lord is the spirit, so are you. So it's all about identity, that I in you. Who is that I in you? I tell you the truth, that I in you is Christ. So give up the ghost. Acknowledge it. Be humble. It's too good to be true, I know. I know you're a piece of shit, same here. You don't deserve nothing, same here. But as soon as we identify with the Christ in us, we're walking in the Spirit, it's a supernatural resurrection power that comes, because it is reality. And we're just pinching ourselves off. Every time we say, well... Oh, I'm not quite there yet. I'm not really feeling it yet. Yeah, I'm struggling in this area of my life still. You're actually regurgitating what has been manifested, but what has been manifested isn't reality. What is reality? I'll tell you the truth. Reality is the substance. That's the spirit. Faith is the spirit or the substance of things hoped for, the essence of things hoped for, yet not seen. Not seeing the senses, but you know it. The essence has been given you. The spirit has been given you. That's reality. So acknowledge that reality. You'll be free in the moment, in every circumstance. In the storms of chaos come around you, you'll be a hurricane of peace. You will be the eye of the storm. Because that eye in you is no longer you. 
It's Christ. That is the rock foundation. Paul said it as well. We don't see male or female Christ in you, is all we see. So don't judge anyone for temporal decisions, temporal actions. You've got to judge them according to the Father's judgment, which is the judgment on the Son, which is everyone made it. And you may be thinking, how does this work? Don't worry about it, just accept it, and you'll see how everything works out. Because you need your foundation in the right place, and you can't have the right foundation while still have judgment, judgment for another, because the judgment from another is coming from an eye in you that is temporal. Because the Christ in you that judges, judges everything righteous and in him. So the, so you may understand the parable of the talents. I'm not saying that there's not a shadow world of unbelief and hell and death and sickness and devils and, and souls, lost souls. I'm not saying that's not a reality. I'm saying it's not the foundational reality. It's not the Alpha and Omega revelation. And it's not really revelation. It's not really reality from Jesus Christ's point of view. It's a shadow. It's death and hell. It's under his feet. And he fulfilled the shadow. And he redeemed and reconciled all things. That means all souls, by the way, because all men died in him. All mankind were risen in him. So what's it to you if he recre recreates Adolf, Adolf Hitler's soul? And you see Adolf Hitler running around in the Garden of Eden. What's that to you? So don't judge. Because you either believe the word of God or you don't. And you may think what I'm saying is ludicrous. Well, that's okay. I'll have your talents. Always gravitate to the, towards the highest word, which will uh, challenge your current belief system until there are no more belief systems apart from I am belief itself. I am reality itself. And anything that is good and perfect, I'm going to take it all the way to the throne room because that's it's already there. It's already there. So I want to be like my master. So am I saying, so let's just deal with this real quickly death and hell and all this stuff because like I believe in that stuff I believe in it because people believe in it just like me I've lived in portions of my soul most of my life I had lived in hell and unbelief in areas of my soul right even though I've confessed Lord Lord is my savior and, and, and Lord of my life because this deep sorcery this unbelief that clouds our minds um as we've been sold in the slave of sin. This stuff, uh, it's all deception. It's all, you know, when we identify with Christ, it, it, it's, it's washed away by the washing of the word. The truth sets us free. But um, I want to acknowledge for your intellect's sake that all that stuff's real. All that hell and darkness and devils is all real. So you can just rest easy and know that I'm not crazy. But I am raptured in the throne room. And in the throne room, under my feet, is all that stuff. I've been raised far above it, far above it. So why are we still talking about it? As if it's still a thing to work out. You know it's the God of peace that crushes Satan. Being there, done that. You know Satan can only exist in the flesh. So the eye, the sandy eye, built, building its whole life on this idea of you being a temporal person, or you being a person inside of Jesus rather than being Jesus in you, Hallelujah. I mean, it is both, but what I'm, I'm challenging that belief that you are just a person, that whole personhood, that whole individual self, let that be crucified. Because it has been, so don't get into yourself into idolatry. Let your eyes be smashed. Hallelujah. Identify with his eye. Your body will be full of light. And so that means Adolf Hitler too. Praise Jesus, the whole body of humanity. I just like using this guy because he, like, he's the face of evil um, for a lot of people. And, and lots of different, you know, terrible acts of mankind done by all these terrible people. But God loves them. And God sees the seed of faith. You know, it's interesting. Every man's been given a measure of faith. And Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of that faith. Do you think he finished the job? So I'm not saying that there's not a a flesh that is cut off forever in misery. But that's not us, and it's certainly not mankind. And so this, the individual I that was created in the image of God, the expression of God, let's take Adolf Hitler, for example. He's birthed out of the Messiah. He learns some wrong stuff. He goes down the wrong tree. He manifests some bad fruit. 
and he doesn't, let's say he just was completely antichrist, didn't believe in Jesus, but I believe he did believe in Jesus, because actually he was influenced on Martin Luther's works. Um, praise God. So anyway, there's, um, you can have distorted religious weird ideas and, and twist the word and all this stuff. Um, God dealt with all of that. God forgave all of that. God took responsibility for that in his son. So if you're going to look at someone on the earth plane, you've got to realize you're looking at Jesus because he took responsibility for the sin. First son in, in the Hebrew tradition gets judgment. Second sons get grace. So if you're born first, you actually have to take responsibility for your brothers and sisters that are born after you. Even if they're the ones who screwed up, you take responsibility. So isn't that interesting? Um, Jesus took responsibility for Adolf Hitler. So, <laughs> so when it's Christ in you looking at Adolf, he actually sees himself and he knows he's been resurrected in him. I'm not saying that he looks the same, but I'm saying the talent, the seed, the faith, the measure of faith that was given. I am the light in the world. All men have this light. He says, oh, you are the light in the world. He said that to us. And also, he's the light of all men, it is written. He's the light of all men. So all men have a light. Now, men may go down in the darkness and never return. But is that really a man? That's the 666 beast nature that was cut off. Interesting. Three men, praise God, revelation for you. Three men on a hill. Six is the number of man. Seven, the number of the divine. Three, three on a hill. Skull hill, 666. Six. crucified, done away with, hallelujah, the knowledge of good and evil right beside him, praise God, the whole work just done, judged, you know, God took responsibility for both prisoners, both people on the cross, not just the one who confessed in that moment, but the other one also, so, and Jesus Christ crossed the impossible abyss, of you know, from Abraham's bosom to the other side, he crossed the abyss, go check out Kat Kerr's um, vision, where she explains what happened there, Praise God. But the word of truth says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. I mean, it's, it's all there. There's no abyss. The veil has been torn. So there's temporal stuff. That's sure. And there's hell. Sure. But let's, let's just realize where we're all seated far above. Let's realize that just because someone who was an innocent child, and no, there's no one here that's going to look at a child and go, that's a child's evil. There's an innocence to a child, right? Uncorrupted. Innocence. So Adolf Hitler had this innocence. That innocence doesn't go away. That's Christ Jesus, Christ in you. For me and you and everyone. That's Christ. That's life. That's him. That never gets lost. That word never returns void. In Christ Jesus, he reconciled all things in heaven and on earth. So I'm not saying that Adolf Hitler is going to be... I'm using that word, I'm using that name to challenge belief systems. And I'm going full extreme with this, but really this is reality. This is what the Word of God teaches, played out practically. And um, you look, take, you can take my word for it. You can take the Word of God for it. If you resist this Word, you're actually anti-Christ in that area of your soul. So you need to repent because you can't, you can't read the Word of God. And, you know, this is not an unbalanced teaching. I do acknowledge that Adolf Hitler is burning in hell right now, as I am too also in my flesh. The unbelieving part of my soul is burning forever in, in uh, an eternal destruction. But I'm not conscious of it. Praise Jesus. Amen. Same with Jesus Christ. Because we went with the Christian doctrine of... Um, I just want to clear this out while well, we've got momentum on this because this will really help some people. I've done some other teachings on this, but it's really you know, important to be washed with the Word. Um, people... A lot of people in Christianity believe that Jesus took responsibility, right? like like I'm saying. And they believe that punishment for sin is separation from God, which is suffering, and it's eternal hell. Where we choose the wrong God in front of Him, and so we're just stuck in this place. Because we had an opportunity to believe and we didn't. Right? There's some truth to that. Praise God. There's some truth to that. Praise God. So, um... If that's is that, if we follow that along the way, and they and then this is the next thing they say, <clears throat> Jesus, um, he died. 
He took on sin. He took our punishment for us. He took our punishment for us. He took the punishment of sin so that we could be free. So oh, hold on. What is the punishment? The very punishment you just said, what was it? Oh, it was eternal destruction and hellfire forever and ever. It's, it's, it's hell. Uh, that's like a fire. That's the judgment of God. So you're saying Jesus is eternally uh, in that place. That's what you're saying, because he's taken, he's, he, he's suffering the consequences of sin on your behalf. He's died in your place. He's, he's taking the punishment on your behalf. So, you know, he's saying, you know, that, that's what we're saying. That's the punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, not really, because he got, he was born, he, he was resurrected. Death could not hold him down. Okay, praise God, that's the truth. Don't you know it says all men were in him? All souls were in him. He preached the word that doesn't return void in the lowest places. So if you really understand eternally, you know, even even in um, from a mathematical point of view, two parallel lines do meet at the point of infinity. They must meet at the point of infinity. Praise God. This gospel goes full circle with every soul. And let no, let there be no excuse for you to judge another anymore past, present, or future, based on their works, because we don't see after the eyes of the flesh, but the Spirit. And some of the most renowned preachers and, and ministers in the world do not know this. My masters that taught me did not know this. I pray that they do. I pray that they will. Hallelujah. It's a free gift, and I'm a teacher, and this is my gift to the body of Christ, is to give um, truth to explain the mechanics of the renewal of the mind and the realities of the kingdom and what this means how this practically plays out and I know these things through experience and yes I've talked to Adolf Hitler I don't, I don't talk to the dead I talk to the living God is not the God of the dead God of the living and you better believe that Christ in the child of any person here has been raised up. Now, if people aren't talking about it in the prophet in the prophetic, it's because they have not been given eyes to see yet. It's okay. I'm, I'm talking from the prophetic right now through experience, and I'm either preaching a gospel of Satan where I'm talking uh, some weird good news twisted with a lie that's going to corrupt humanity, or I'm actually bringing the truth. And you just got to make a decision. I'm either bringing clean, you know, tasty, uh, sweet waters that will set you free, or bitter wormwood waters that are going to produce death. But I'm not talking about death, I'm talking about life. God has got a living, not a dead. And that seed that God sowed in every soul, parable of the talents, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He owns all the gold and the silver, all the talents. Um, if you're faithful with little, you'll be faithful with much. Christ Jesus took all the talents back. He was like a good steward. Nay, hallelujah. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, flesh. The flesh can't do anything. The flesh is scared. The flesh is going to hide its talents. It's not going to, it's been cut off forever. Uh, the spirit of the soul, your soul is your body. Your soul is your new body. That's why when you go to sleep at night, you have a body in your dream. That's, and hallelujah. In the spirit, when we see things from the first person experience, in the spirit, hallelujah, spirit, soul, body, we're all one in him. So I'm saying the body's done away with, yet the body exists. How does this work? Well, everything's recreated and everything's redeemed. So everything I'm saying is double-edged sword. It's two sides of the coin. But I sit in the middle. There is a third side of the coin. You know this. It's the middle, thin sliver. That's where we're supposed to live. Narrow is the way. The middle way. So you can see things and, and hear things and actually hear things and um, judge things according to time periods in your mind because you're formless. So I'm talking about temporal things and eternal things in this whole thing, throughout this whole thing. So when you have discernment, and when you're living in the spirit, you can easily say, oh, well, that's talking about temporal things. Oh, that's talking about 
spiritual, heavenly, eternal things. Same when you read the Word of God. You go, well, this is a temporal thing, and in context of the eternal thing, that makes sense. But if you get it twisted, you're in trouble. Many, many, many get it twisted. The flesh gets it twisted. Praise God. There's no reward for that flesh. That flesh is dead and buried. But the resurrected flesh, hmm, there's rewards for that. Hallelujah. So be a wise steward. Praise God. How do we be a wise steward? Well, we can't, but Christ in us can. Christ in us, he owns all the talents. He raised us up in him. We can't get away from this gospel. We've got to identify fully with it. So we realize that our day to day, we're just an expression of him. But our foundation is the rock, Christ in us, Christ in everyone from Alpha to Omega, everyone who was born, every evil tyrant out there, every child molester, every pedophile, actually seeing Christ in them. You know, I've had many, many experiences to validate this, and you can have the same experiences if you humble your heart and acknowledge with your mouth these things to be true, because this is what the Word of God says. It's too good to be true. It's beyond our belief, and it kind of confronts our belief in hell and I'm not doing away with that. I think that that is still a real place in the shadow. But it's just a shadow. I'm more interested in the one who causes the shadow. And that's where we actually live and exist and have our being. And in this place, what's it to you if these ones don't taste of death that you supposed were burning forever and eternity? When you see things corporately in the body of Christ, you realize that every... One is in that unbelieving portion of flesh that was cut off forever. Everyone's burned in hell. Flip side, you got to acknowledge that there's the resurrection. And this is what I'm more interested in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because this is reality. Let the shadow be the shadow. That's the truth. But don't, but, but, <laughs> whatever. With the head, not the tail. Let's not be so concerned with the tail. I'm more concerned with the head and seeing things clearly as a single eagle eye. Seeing things, you know, hallelujah, above the, the storms of chaos. Praise Jesus, flying high, seeing things clearly. So this set you free and didn't create more confusion because God's not the author of confusion. Like I said, I was going to give some experience to the word. Okay, so... <clears throat> I've had many experiences where I've been challenged by a demonic entity in a, di in a different dimension, right? Now, we often call these dreams, these different dimensions. So um, these experiences, I've had many where I have fought it and won. And I've had many where I've fought it and I lost. But then God started showing me a better way. Because that's the knowledge of good and evil. Now, when we don't see out the eyes of the flesh, we see that all things in heaven and earth have been reconciled. I, 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 can, I can have wisdom in the moment. The truth sets me free. So there's, there's no fight in me. The battle is the Lord's. And the Word is the Spirit of truth. Sort of truth. Sort of the Spirit is the Word of God. <clears throat> so, and the shield of faith, hallelujah, protects us. But if we come across these things, it's because God's allowed them so that we can overcome them. We overcome by the word of the testimony of yes and amen and the blood. It's been given. But there's no fight. There's no fight. And we are in this mobile throne room where this, this single eye is right here and this single eye is Christ. So this, Christ doesn't lose a battle. But Christ recognizes all things have been reconciled and that he's a creator of his own reality. Christ is the creator. You are just like him. So in this experience, God started teaching me. Um, you know, my first reaction, my knee-jerk reaction was to fight. Fight the evil. Right now, to do my own experience, that works sometimes, that doesn't work other times. But this is how I never lose a battle. And even going back in the mem into the, my mem mem memory, even if I forget this in the moment, I go, oh, yeah, I forgot about this revelation, I started fighting, I lost it. Um, there's a, it's just a challenge. It's, there's, no, there's no, you don't lose anything, you're not possessed by a devil. Hallelujah, you're possessed by the Holy Ghost, and this is all training for reigning. But this is so you can you can withstand anything in life, especially in the in the natural realm. If if you can't handle persecution, if you can't love those who persecute you, um, 
then you're standing in the way of Christ, because Christ does perfectly through you. So no more judgment. Hallelujah. The only judgment we're allowed is going, that's the Lord. So in this, <laughs> seriously, that's the only judgment we're allowed. No more after the eyes of flesh, but the Spirit, which sees the potential, the essence of life in everyone. I'm the author and finisher of the faith. He finished it. So we can actually see people as a full-grown Messiah, as he is so we in this world. Because it's not about our works. It's about a gift. It's about a reality. Praise Jesus. So in these experiences, hallelujah, I just pray, God, that you send a translator so someone can translate these words. Pujada Karadich into Mandarin. Hallelujah, Jesus. If that's your call, then get to it, buddy. Get this out to China. Hallelujah. That just came to me. Praise Jesus. Now, if you've got word of truth, then speak it out. You might not have... Um, look, I don't have the word of truth for tomorrow, but I've got the word of truth for today, which is eternal truth anyway, so I do for tomorrow. But if you're on your journey, speak the truth. That's the, that's God in you. Speak the truth, the spirit of truth. Practice that. Practice Christ in you. Be that. You don't enjoy being a six-year-old Christ. Enjoy being a child of God. It's good. Speak the truth. And if you want, record it, because when it's evergreen content, if we're all producing this evergreen content, like digitally cloning your voice onto the cloud, you are the cloud of witnesses. And you're going to cl- get make this earth so cloudy with the words of God. It's going to get great. But don't, don't make evergreen content about judging other people and about... In the name of discernment, looking at someone going, yeah, I'm not sure about this healing. Yeah, I'm not sure about that teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about that heavenly experience. That sounds like a demon to me. You know, like, I mean, is this the accuser of the brethren? It's the, it's the accuser. It's Satan. It's not even Christ. So, you, you know, you've got to have a balanced teaching. And to have a balanced teaching is to go full bore into the gospel. Hallelujah. And in that, you get understanding about all these other different measures of of uh, developments that, that take place and that the Word speaks about. Different dimensions. Different realities. But really, the highest reality is what I want to bring attention to. Because that sets you free from all shackles of guilt and shame. Praise God, Jesus, curse the fig leaf. No more guilt and shame covering you. Shachuma. So anyway, hallelujah, I want to finish up with this. Um, I've had many experiences like this in the spirit. I know I've been jumping from one thing to another, this whole thing. But uh, be free. Uh, listen to this a few times if you need to. Praise God. Um, but yeah, you do need to make, make a decision. Um, if you're not sure about some of my words, that's okay. I wasn't sure about a lot of my master's words. I'm not, not sure about a lot of... If I really take what the Bible says for real and think about it, I'm like, hmm, I'm not even sure about that. I don't have faith for that. Lord, I just receive it by faith. Put it on the shelf. That's what I do. If I'm not sure about something, I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure about that. I'll put it on the shelf. God, can you judge that? Because what he will do, he will judge the spiritual essence of it and give it to you. But if you judge it as unholy, what you're doing is... You know, you're depleting your own supply. You're actually shutting out the Spirit of God to work. If you're just going, nah, I'm not interested in that. Nah, that's wrong. Um, nah, I don't believe that. Then what you're actually doing, especially if it's a higher word that's that's threatening your belief systems, it's a sure sign that uh, God wants to shake everything that can be shaken. Because we've got to be like a child to enter into the kingdom. The child doesn't have any belief systems. It's just a sponge. So if we can put things on the shelf and ask God to judge them, we're in a good place. That's going to produce good fruit. God, judge my heart. Judge my mind. God, judge my neighbor. Judge these words. Judge this environment. And you know, after a while, you can stop saying that because you realize that all things were judged in the sun. So the final judgment of mankind is coming, but that's a final awakening, eruption of what has already been stirred up. It's actually the full canopy of the tree, which has already been given in the sun, who is a seed. So it is finished. It really is finished. The day of the Lord has come and we're in it right now. It's playing out. It's a tree of life growing up. So it's good. You begin a high throne, not high throne, no high throne than the most high. That's your throne. About this, she will look at him at the father in you. The father in you, the creator in you, saying, hey, you're just like me. You're a creator just like me. And that's why when you're in these experiences, Talking back again about this, 
um, fighting with devils, um, that, that the Holy Spirit would bring me on these journeys to fight, you know, dragons, trolls, um, yeah, massive giants, massive uh, Jezebel spirit, massive, these things in comparison to me. I want to give you a couple of experiences here. Okay, one, well, my mind's gone, this big giant, she's a, she's a, she's a, a big female giant, I get the revelation, it's uh, Jezebel, we're in this massive cave, I'm, f I'm trying to fly kick her, almost like a, like a, like a, like a video game, like trying to fly kick her off of uh, the rock, like I was standing on a high place, um, trying to fly, fly kick her, but she's so big it's impossible. Boom, the, the, the next scene, I'm, I'm suddenly flashed down onto a small uh, square rock in, on, the, on the floor, and then this experience stopped. God said, "You can't, you can't fight in your own flesh." Well, we didn't see Jesus fighting in the, fl in, the, in the in the fleshly soul. When soul came to him and said, "Wear this armor," he said, "No, you can be free in the spirit to be yourself. That is Christ in you. To be yourself, to be yourself is Christ in you. When you feel the most yourself, that is Christ in you." Just want you to let know that. Now, David slung the word of God by faith took out the head. When you take out the head of the army of darkness, you take out the whole army. The head is not some big demon. The head is the flesh. All, and that's why we see the the, um, the pigs that were cast out, uh, the spirits that were cast out of the demoniac, the legion of spirit, evil spirits that were cast out, the army of darkness that were cast out. They were cast into the pigs, and the pigs went into the um, water. In the same way, Jesus said, if you have faith, like I must have said, you can say this mountain be removed. That mountain of unbelief is the government. The government of the kingdom of darkness. You take out the head, you take out the whole thing. So you take out Goliath, you take out the whole thing. Who's Goliath? That's you and me, buddy. The flesh, the self-identity apart from Christ, the I apart from I am, is Goliath. We get high on our supply all the time. You need to cut that out, get high on him. And then get high on Christ in you. That's okay. Glory to glory. But to get high on you as a person apart from Christ, that's death and bewitchment and fleshly. And you can have all the truth known intellectually. It's not going to, it still doesn't matter. You could be doing signs and wonders in the Spirit, even in His name. And He would say, Depart from me, I never knew you. So do not rely on self in His name. Be transformed into his name by letting go by acknowledging with the word you walk in the spirit with this word the word and the spirit are one as you speak this word you become these words eat my words eat my body drink my blood drink my spirit the spirit in the word and the breath of life itself that's why it's good to meditate it's good to breathe it's good to drink Hallelujah. So in this in this experience, <clears throat> my foundation was this, was was the rock, the rock of Christ in me, Christ in even Christ in that spirit. Even though I know he's saying no, no Christ in the demon. Well, actually, there there is because that measure that was given them, they were angelic and they fell. But the record that God gave them of is eternal, and so that's the talents He took them back. I'm not saying the devils are saved. I'm saying that we're saved and therefore everything we look at can turn to gold and everything that isn't Christ can fall down into the shadows and be completely overshadowed by the light. Even darkness is his light to him. So the revelation was don't fight, don't fight in your own flesh. You win some battles, you lose some. But stand on the rock and speak the word and know who you are. That's the right foundation, not... You know, when I was fly kicking this spirit, it, I was up, <laughs> I was up on this ledge, and I was like, you know, I was up on the foundation. It would seem like it's a better vantage point, but God took me to the low place. Hallelujah! When you go lower than your enemy, your enemy will not no longer be there. So that that, that was one. But I've had many experiences of, of the following, though, where I see um, what I would consider a, an evil spirit. A demonic entity someone someone or something coming at me 
whether it be a spirit of lust, whether it be a, a violent spirit, whether it be a, um, a tormenting spirit, a fearful, fear-mongering spirit, whatever, a religious spirit, whatever. There's discernment. But my knee-jerk reaction used to be, oh, let's fight. And like I said, win some, lose some. Tree of knowledge. Good and evil. But when you know this reality of Christ in filling and flooding all things, that's reality. Like I said, I'm talking about the body of Christ. You know, I have single, it's full of light. There's a shadow, and I've acknowledged that, so don't, you know, I'm not throwing out hell. Hell's real. But hell's real because uh, hell is just the fire of God, and hell is who we are. We are the fire of God, we're consuming fire in him. Shabbat yadam adadish. Praise God, all this fire is going through my leg right now, just speaking about this. Praise God. The word goes into the bone and the marrow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, so someone's getting their, their leg healed. Hallelujah. Left kneecap, bang. Shakata you makesh. But all these things are healed. I mean, I'm talking about the body. I'm talking, like I said, I'm talking about temporal things and eternal things. Because in eternity, there is no sickness. So, you know, there's no sickness. You are divine health. So that's the word I want to bring. But if there's temporal manifestation, I'll speak them out also because we possess and we uh, speak into time and space and bring it back up in the throne room. So um, we, we possess all things in Christ Jesus. So hallelujah. So it's all good. Hallelujah. <laughs> so um, knowing this truth, Christ in all things, feeling and flooding all things, and knowing that there's a shadow that I can get, I can dive into the shadow and I can win some and lose some. That's folly in comparison to what I'm going to share. Now, in these same experiences, when I now that I know this revelation of Christ in all things, by faith, in the same moment, these different dimensions, different evil spirits, different devils coming face to face with these things. Um, <laughs> Holy Spirit. Instead of that knee-jerk reaction of fighting, when I look at them and I see Christ in them, they literally shapeshift. Into either a child holding a branch of olives, olive leaves. These leaves, our thoughts, are the healing of all the nations, healing of all the peoples of every nation, every tribe and tongue. Praise God. They shapeshift into a child, the innocence of a child, under the tree of life, under the provision of God. There's a record that we've all got access to when we look in our enemy's eyes. And truly, if you've walked down the way of Christ, the most evil you've ever seen is in your own reflection, because that's Goliath. All of the kingdom of darkness can only be accessed into your life through your own flesh. You are the one that needs to die at Skull Hill. Praise God, you experience the death and the resurrection and the life by acknowledging that you died in Him and that you rose with Him. So it's not a works. It's just acknowledge, 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 acknowledge the power of acknowledgement. The Word sets us free from ourselves to be a slave of love, to be a love slave, in fact, to be love himself, Christ in us, hope of glory. So that takes, there's no fight in the throne room, there's the God of peace that crushed Satan under his feet. So Satan hates this revelation because you can't lose. When you see Christ in all things, in heaven and earth, even in the evil spirits, even Satan himself, you look, that's why, Je that's why he hates Jesus going down. If you read any of um, Anna Roundtree's material, Satan hates Jesus coming down to show sons and daughters what's going on in the kingdom of darkness to get bring revelation because in the darkness there's lots of revelation. Amen. Lots of hidden treasure. So the Bible says the hidden treasure in darkness. 
Even God himself surrounds himself with thick darkness. Praise God. Even darkness is as light to him. I just love it. Holy Spirit. That's why in my content I play a lot with darkness. Because darkness is as light to me. If you don't have a renewed mind, then you're going to struggle. And that's okay. You just need it. This is pride. It's unbelief. It's self. But praise God, you acknowledge these words. You'll be set free from self. And so you can see himself in all things. And all scenarios. And if in your memories, all your memories will be passed through the eye of the needle and sifted through. And you'll be okay. It's, it's resurrection. You've got to see your past as resurrected. Otherwise, you can't walk in resurrection presently and in the future. You can by grace. You can be drowned by the drink. But that's grace. God wants you to transform from the inside out. The Noah's uh, flood, the flood waters, they first came from the inside out. It's okay. There's grace for people to be drowned in reality of Christ. That's grace. But God wants to transform people from the inside out. And if you've been called, if you've struggled, if you've tried, and, you know, hallelujah, you really tried, you're desperate, this word will free you to know that it's a done deal because it already happened. So let your past be his past. Because if you can't acknowledge that your past has been perfected in Christ Jesus, you cannot walk in the freeness of the, of, of the mind of Christ in your now reality. And you, if you acknowledge that you've got problems in your past and your present, then you can still have those problems in your past and the present in the future. Christ has been resurrected above these things. You're in Him. You don't have any of these problems. It's a phantom. It's a vain imagination. But it will be as real to you as anything else. Because you're a creator God made in his image. So you can create these things. And you have been creating these things on a loop. As you, all of humanity has been doing. Praise God. But. New creation. The truth sets us free. And when we speak from the throne room. These things fall off. Hallelujah. Freedom. Freedom from self. Freedom from the knowledge of good and evil. Tree of life only. From good to better. From better to best. Fully satisfied in every moment. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient for me. I've got, I'm not missing out on anything. So don't be jealous of other people who seem more drunk than you. Because you are the drink. Amen. Maybe they got more drunk, uh, more, more drink. Not because of any good drinking they've been doing, but because of grace. So don't be jealous. Praise God for it. But know you're the drink. There's one thing to receive from the outside in, but Christ in you hope of glory. Praise Jesus. So I'm not judging anyone. I'm not judging those who drink and those who don't drink. If you're not drinking, you should be drinking. But drink, drinking is just breathing and just breathing in reality and just acknowledging the truth. It's living in the Spirit. The Word is the Spirit. If you want to change your life, the tongue is like a, a rudder to the ship. It will move you in the right direction. Praise God. Book of James. Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. So you need to get a word of God, the promise of God, in your mouth. You need to pray in tongues. Pray with tongues and pray with the understanding also. And when you speak to your neighbor in this plane of existence, know that this is prayer. Know that you're speaking to Christ in them. This is a holy prayer. Always. So you don't... You know, pray before you have food and then go back to normal life, speaking to normal people. It's always Christ. And if they don't have faith for it, they might reject it. That's okay. That's okay, but you still know the truth and you can speak the truth. It's all good. You don't have to defend your truth. The truth, if you really know the truth, you don't need defending. It's, it's reality. Why would you defend reality? In fact, in your defense, you... You, you actually you seem a little bit desperate. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's all good. Being there, done that. Praise God. So hope, hopefully it's unlocked some keys for you in a whole lot of ways. But to really, the, like I said, the, gate, the, the takeaway, the gateway for you um, practically is get the word of God in your mouth. Let it not depart. Let it not stop departing from your mouth. Let, you know, let it always be on your lips. It will change your life. Because you got brainwashed in Babylon. It's time to be brainwashed by the washing of the word. Truth. And did you notice that the word of God kind of changed in the four gospels of Jesus? His word, his tone, the way he was acting, the way that he was speaking really changed. 
So don't get fixated on trying to be like Jesus in the four Gospels. If you're going to be like Jesus, be Jesus of John uh, 14 and 17. Because that's when he's had his most clarity. Now he's speaking in a different way. He's calling his disciples friends. He's saying, you know, you're all just like me. The Father's in you. The Father's in me. And uh, anyone, who, you know, this is for everyone. Like, hallelujah. Uh, I'm the vine, you're the branches. I mean, there was this union message, and that's the message of Christ. The message of Christ isn't for you to be walking around the churches with a machine gun, like Jesus with a whip, although that was perfect. It's perfect to grow up and out and overcome and grow. Like Jesus grew in wisdom, it says. Through suffering, he was made perfect. There was a process to it. But we've got a good report. We've overcome by the word of our testimony. And he is the word of our testimony. We can't, you know, we can't have, we can't overemphasize our own personal journey, our I apart from I am. We need to, we need to acknowledge I am, that I am, Jesus Christ. When we acknowledge him, we've got the blood and we've got the word of testimony, which is just amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. And then Christ in us can grow and, and we can be fully content and satisfied in this moment. And anything that, anything that wars against you, you can love. Love your enemies to death. Perfect love casts that all fear. Praise God. There's some real keys here. So praise God. I acknowledge Christ in you. Please acknowledge Christ in you too. It's no longer you that live. It's Christ. So, and su the natural world around you is supernatural, so don't feel like you're missing out. You are a spirit, having a spiritual experience right now on the earth, so it's all good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, I'm signing it off. It's been uh, Grace Line Hunter speaking a little Christ magic abracadabra into your life, creating with words, which the abracadabra means. Hallelujah. Christ magic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, guys. Love you. Peace. World peace, that is. <laughs> Wise. Go and do it with me. Do it with me. Hallelujah. Wise. You know, I got a bit carried away uh, a few times. I just wanted to bring a little bit of resolution a couple times um, one in regards to fear topic of fear fearing the Lord the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and um, the other thing is um, I started talking about my experience about you know there's no fight in the throne room and when I see <clears throat> I can I can be a co-creator with God in this creative light glory when a, a demon or a devil is there, I can see Christ in them and they fade away. They change into the image of the innocent. And I've seen this over and over, and you can't lose in this because you're, going, you're actually transcending the knowledge of good and evil. So I wanted to speak on that a little bit on my actual experience because I did say, you know, there's a few versions of this and I only gave you one, which is the child holding the, the, the branch. Um... Let's just first go into fear for a little bit. Um, I said, if you have a fear of devil, it's actually fear of the Lord. The reason that is, I'm not saying that the Lord is the devil. I'm just saying a devil is um, the knowledge of, of evil. And uh, like I said, we can transcend that. We actually do live in a place um, by faith that accesses beyond that realm altogether 24 7 that's the mind of christ but the mind of christ does move through time and space um to grow it's the pressure that forms a diamond so there is um there is some good resistance just like working out holy spirit will send you uh give you experiences to give you a workout and it's good and um praise god Jacob wrestled the Lord, we wrestled Satan. <laughs> Can't say it's not perfect. Hallelujah. Um, but what I'm saying is, I'm just playing a little bit, but well, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that if you fear, um, you have a fearful experience with the devil, um, that fear um, actually at its root is the fear of the Lord. And that's the beginning of wisdom when you can acknowledge that. 
because that again transcends that knowledge of good and evil because God is good all the time and so you can get over yourself and get over your fear of death because it's just ego that's scared that's okay you read most people who have angel-like experiences they're on the ground shaking because they're scared and the angel says hey don't be scared I'm of the Lord <laughs> it's all good but um, so there's that okay so I'm not being weird and saying God's the devil although I, I am kind of saying that tongue-in-cheek in that like I, like I say in the teaching there's the shadow realm and um, of course that's the kingdom of darkness but then there's the the body of light and that's what I'm really interested in and so in the body of light you can use any word under the sun including devil and Satan and it's filled with light it's not filled with darkness so there's that um, now through experience transcending the knowledge of good and evil um, in these quote unquote battles if you will there's no battle, the battle is the Lord's it's just acknowledging that and actually seeing the Lord in all things it transcends it and it shapeshifts them into a new creation actually the innocence of a child like I said but it's interesting the stages that I've had I think the most interesting one is the knowledge of good going to the knowledge of evil and then going into the kingdom and seeing Christ so an example of this is a beautiful woman in a dream and I've encountered this before numerous times a beautiful um, lady who's um, I can feel there's lust there's a pull there and instead of just going along with with a, a, a lustly desire I actually go um, you know I basically say hey, are you the Christ <laughs> I ask him hey are you the Christ and uh, they shapeshift into this ugly demon. Hideous. But the Lord taught me, no, keep on going. And so in, even in that shapeshift, I go, no, where's Christ? I want to see Christ. He fills and floods all things. Boom. That ugly demon falls off. So there's knowledge of good, the appearance of beauty, which is really a lust, lustly demonic demon underneath that beauty but underneath that is Christ so if you take it full circle you see Christ I've experienced this multiple times and this is true according to the word of scripture but it's also true when you start applying this to your life and it's good in the earth realm as well when you see someone who's giving you a hassle hassle hassling you giving you a hard time um, have positioned themselves as the enemy you don't have to see them as the enemy the word says, uh, you know, Jesus said, agree, agree with your, um, agree with your accuser while you're on the way to the, the court, so it may go well with you. Your adversary, the one who opposes you, um, agree with them. Actually, agree with their words and go, yeah, that's true. I'm guilty of all that, because the same potential seed of Adam and that seed of sin lives in all of us. Uh, so if we can just own it if someone spots it on us even though we might be walking in the spirit and being misunderstood and misjudged we we don't have to fight and defend we can actually go yep that's true according to my flesh yep and that's what's called taking the you know, high priest role taking responsibility for all the nation's sin so if you're taking responsibility for all the nation's sin and you should because that's what jesus does and you're just like him then um you could easily go yep i agree and then that's that done there's no fight in the throne room. No self-defense needed because you've transcended the knowledge of good and evil. Praise God. So this is some practical keys that will set you free. Spirit, soul, body. Um, the other experience I wanted to mention in, that I've experienced of the same, the same thing is um, not just seeing a child, the Christ child in people, but actually seeing a golden coin. I refer to this as the talent. But this is the seed of glory. This is the seed of, of Christ. I see it as a, I've seen it multiple times in people. Now, uh, let me give you another ex experience. This is with a religious spirit. I saw a lady, and later on I saw this lady in the flesh as well, so it was a prophetic thing. But uh, in, the, in this dream I saw this lady, she had a, a religious spirit, and I could see it. I um, 
And so as, as I saw it, she turned into a, a viper, snake. As I continued to make a decision to go in to my point of view that I'm seeing this, I didn't fight the snake, I looked and I was like, Christ fills and floods all things, let's see Christ. The snake shapeshift into a golden coin. Amen. So there's hidden treasure. The treasures of darkness, the Bible calls it. So um, I just wanted to encourage you that you can transcend the knowledge of good and evil in your first person experience. And it's, uh, you know, there's no laws other than the law of liberty. But if you are viewing other people as underneath you and you're fighting with demons and stuff like this, then actually you're not living according to the law of liberty in Christ Jesus. You're living according to the law of sin and death. There's no fight in the throne room. Just all that stuff happens under your feet. It's the shadow lands, and you've been set free from that. So be renewed right now in the spirit of your mind to where you actually live, which is in the throne room, completely raptured, heaven on earth every day. No more fighting. So when you see a, um, a, a challenge from the shadow, then praise God, you can actually transcend that and see them shape shift, and they'll fall off. I'll give you one last example of the light that shatters the darkness. Um, there was a demonic entity that I saw in a hallway, and I ran right into it, and it ran it into me. And what happened was, I completely destroyed it. I looked behind me, and it's on the ground. Um, now, the first time this happened, I was a little bit skeptical. I was like, oh, it's happening. And I was like watching myself do this, but also having a first-person experience as well, doing this in this dream. Hallelujah. If you have dreams, praise God, you're blessed. You're having visions, open visions in this uh, place, and it's great. These multiple dimensions, it's a great place of learning. Hallelujah. So don't, don't, um, yeah, dreams are important. Anyway, um, so the first time this happened, yeah, I, I was like, oh, there's this fight here, but there was no real fight at all because I am the light. And the light can't stick to dark. Uh, darkness can't stick to light. Light can't stick to darkness. Well, that's what the Bible says. What relationship does darkness have with light? And you've been uh, removed from the kingdom of darkness, the shadow lands, and into the kingdom of light. You've been completely um, changed. You are the light in the world. Christ is the light of all men. You are this light, father of lights. Light, 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 light and easy. Hallelujah. Um, the second time this happened, this experience that followed up, I was much more confident and enjoyed the process of running and jumping and leaping and praising God in my victory. And when I did that, the demon looked at me and just gave up. I looked behind me and this thing was like completely battered and bruised and it's over. And that's our identity in Christ. I mean, that's your, your, your armory is light. It is a light shield. It is a force field. It is circular. When we think of a shield, often we think of this thing that's like just on our arm. The shield is a force field. It's a circular atmosphere. And actually, it's your spirit and your spirit fills and floods all things. So if there's anything that contradicts itself, uh, opposes that knowledge of God that I'm giving you here, then you can easily transcend it by acknowledging the knowledge of God, which is truth, which sets us free, and which sets us free from all this fighting in the Shadowlands. Praise God. It's okay. We have, we've had decades of being trained in this knowledge of good and evil. Um, so it's okay if you've had some habits and God's breaking them off of you, but the truth sets us free. So just keep on applying these things and you'll learn through experience. But I just wanted to clear up a couple of things and give you a little bit more meat um, via experience and some images to work with. And um, yeah, hallelujah, this is the truth that sets you free. So it's it's all good. Um, Holy Spirit, anything else? Oh yeah, um, yeah, he loves you so much. <laughs> and you yourself are this love and you are joined with the lord you're one spirit with him enjoy your marriage enjoy your union in christ jesus amen